What's up, ladies and gentlemen? We are back in the Patch notes. Finally, a good one. <laughs> oh lord! It, like last year was just terrible. This year, I mean, this isn't the best patch, but at least it's something, right? So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna end up going through the patch notes together. Uh, I do wanna let you guys know I did end up doing a rather lengthy live stream just yesterday. Uh, that's still processing just because YouTube is slow like that for some stupid reason. Uh, and more importantly, I am going to take snippets out of that stream. It might take me a little bit uh, to make shortened videos to kind of give you guys and gals my first impressions of the update and so on and so forth, reactions, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a time to cherish, uh, personally. That's how I feel with uh, Trove updates, especially when it's something like this where once we've done it, it's kind of done, you know? So without further ado, let's get into it. Crystal 5. Crystal 5 gear has been added to the game. There's no new difficulty added to the game. Uh, we were already god tier, so I don't know why they added Crystal 5, but hey, whatever. Crystal 5 gear is in the game. Crystal 5 can drop naturally in the same way that Crystal 4 equipment can, although at a much slower rate. Crystal 5 gear can also be acquired through gear crafting and the gear crafters vault. I'll give you guys uh, an, uh, a hint of what's the most efficient uh, what's the best way to get crystal five it's uh not from gear crafting <laughs> i'll tell you that much now speaking of gear crafting gear crafting is a profession that allows trovians a new method of acquiring equipment for many classes personally speaking i think that this is stupendous because it makes the gap between end game players and starting players that much closer because through being able to craft gear and more importantly the gear crafters boxes which we'll get into it makes crystal gear more obtainable for you guys it makes crafting and upgrading crystal gear more obtainable like it's uh, across the board it is a wonderful idea and it's not that it's, it's not even that it's executed poorly it's just that this doesn't really affect us at the end game that's kind of all there is to it but let's get into it. So anyways, uh, Guillermo Armada, which is this NPC right here, it should just say stupid dragon man, uh, can now be found in the hub. Look for the giant gear in the creator corner. He is the blah, blah, blah. Yeah, he's this guy. He's an idiot. Uh, the Gear Crafter Forge contains six tiers of recipes, allowing players to craft a full range of equipment from uncommon up to crystal. So you can see there's uh, novice faces, so on and so on and so on and so on until finally down at the bottom you see uh, crystal one face. They still got that typo in there. I guess they didn't fix it before it went live. Uh, and you can see it does have a certain requirement. You know, you need to have a certain power rank as well as a certain rank in the profession, obviously. Um, we'll get into it in a moment so it says with the exception of the final crystal tier each 50 points of gear crafting tier will grant a range of equipment rarity depending on the power rank of the active class so essentially it's um yeah it's, it's just gear crafting it's the same as any other profession power rank thresholds correspond to the power rank requirements on the atlas allowing access to more difficult worlds meaning that with u11 being a 30k pr requirement i would assume it means c4 requires 30k pr in order to end up getting if i had to guess but we know c5 requires 45k not necessarily in this crafters table more so in the gear boxes but anyways so it says, for example, the first tier will, depending on power rank, always give uncommon, uh, which is, it'll end up giving green, blue, or purple equipment drops uh, with a rare chance of crafting legendary. Oh, okay. So in this category, it says uncommon to legendary, uh, whereas this is, yeah, it's just crystal. That's it. Uh, but it did say that crystal was the odd one out so the next tier allows the orange blah 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 with a rare chance of shadow blah, 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 blah. uh crystal tier contains recipes up to crystal four which can rarely give players crystal five equipment uh, so for access to uh crystal equipment higher than c1 trovians must make use of the gear crafters terminus which is this stupid table hidden over here behind all these players basically a miniature skill tree of sorts for a crafting profession let's move on 
Crafting equipment takes many old materials, such as flux or and other gathered materials, as well as new ones, because they didn't want endgame players to be able to rush through all of it, which I totally understand. So block elements is one of the new resources, which are obtained by loot collecting equipment just out in the adventure world. So it's just a new resource that we will easily end up obtaining and probably having stacks upon stacks, if not a max inventory's worth when we eventually no longer need to touch any of the gear crafting. Molds, which are specific to each equipment type. So you can see this character actually sells a few of these. Uh, molds can be obtained by loot collecting three star or higher equipment or can be purchased from this character. So what that essentially means is if you want to be the absolute most optimal for your mold ratio and you're like completely free to play and you don't have much flux, you're gonna wanna end up upgrading random gear that you find the lowest tier possibly from like novice world and stuff. Get it to three stars, then loot collect it, you'll get a mold out of it because it's gonna be the most cost effective. Otherwise you're gonna be spending lots and lots of flux. I think in total, uh, someone was saying on stream the other day that including the molds and all the other stuff that you can end up, uh, the flux that you use to craft, I think it's like 5 million flux or something like that. Like just for the amount of gear that you have to craft based on the flux and then the uh, flux that you spend on the molds. So yeah, uh, pure forged molds, the pure forged molds can be found rarely from the gear crafters vaults, which are the boxes that we get from dungeons, which again, we'll talk about those momentarily. Uh, tempered block elements, which are these bad boys right here. You can see I actually have quite a few of them already somehow. Temper block elements are required for crafting crystal four equipment or upgrading crystal five equipment. These can be rarely obtained from gear crafters vaults or when crafting any recipe from the gear crafters forge. So that's probably where I got all of mine because I'm actually uh, saving all of my boxes, which is something you guys will want to do. Uh, again, we'll tackle all that as we go further along here. So when players craft equipment or obtain it from the gear crafters vault, it will have stats appropriate to the current class. So physical damage or whatever. So it says like, for example, no energy regen for classes that don't use energy. Uh, when unlocked, the Crystal 4 gear crafting recipes can rarely reward Crystal 5 when crafted. So similar to uh, the Crystal Rings, which please God don't add Crystal 5 rings. Crafted equipment is always one star with no applied pearls and with stats appropriate to the current class. If consumed before crafting, Forge Enhancer Potions found on the More tab in the store will increase the power of equipment crafted during its specific duration, causing it to be created with two stars instead of one star with upgraded pearl stats. So basically one of the most worthless items in the game. Uh, that was these, the Enhancer Potion. So it makes it so that any gear crafted the gear crafter forge uh, in the next three minutes is more powerful. Don't buy these, that's a scam. Uh, you can get better gear just as drops anyways. The reason why they're trying to make these seem valuable is because the stars that you get on the crafted gear is going to make a huge difference for us end gamers in the Nitro department, in the Forge Fragments department. For everybody else that's playing this game, these are absolutely worthless. Even for somebody like me at the end game, they're pretty worthless. It's just the difference between the amount of time that I would invest in it. But as I would say with almost anything in the cash shop, I try to take it in stride of, okay, well, maybe somebody would buy this if it was actually worth its value. So as we'll get into with these gear uh, booster packs, these are going to end up being a much easier example that I'll be able to give you guys because this essentially, this pack right here is assuming that you're making $40 an hour. I'll explain more on that later as we come to the gear crafter boxes. So anyways, uh, if consumed before crafting the forge enhancer potions, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I already said that a, a, a few additional steps have been added to Cubesley's tutorial quest line that'll end up introducing you to the gear crafting. Uh, and there is also an expertise thread uh, that has been added to, you know, the gear crafting and blah, blah, blah. 
So they do go into a little bit more detail with the gear crafting, which we can get into in a minute. I just want to briefly go over this. You can see this allows crystal two, this allows crystal three, this allows crystal four with a rare chance of crystal five. Each of these different nodes you can see slowly increases the amount of gear crafter vaults that you can obtain either from crafting or farming from dungeons. Uh, and then this, which the, these are pathetic, don't touch them. Like if this was adds a if this was adding two times the chance, but it's 2%, 1%, 0.5%. I don't think whoever was in charge of this understands that the resource cost needs to be equal to what you are obtaining. Why does it cost so much more resources to max this out when the only ones that are really worthwhile is the first one, which is the cheapest, and maybe the second one. It's just, I, I just, I don't like it. This thing is worthless. Essentially, in order to start investing in all of this stuff, you're gonna see that we have to have uh, a certain amount of power rank, but we also have to have gear crafting maxed out in order to level this up anyway. So it's just kind of a, passive afterthought that you'll just have a lot of these resources slowly building up as you no longer craft gear anyways unless you're kind of at the mid game and the gear is actually worthwhile to you i don't know so moving on to the gear crafters vault and this is going to end up being the huge brunt of this update oh my god these are amazing because this is where most of you will end up slowly and steadily getting some of that end game gear that has been kept from you. Even though, yeah, the gear crafting, I mean, it's cool just because it's something that you are going to passively do. Uh, and it definitely has more of an impact than the other professions in the game because gear is, you know, literal power. Uh, but the gear crafter vaults, these are the big one. So these are in, uh, these can end up dropping from dungeons and they will drop equipment appropriate to the class that you're using and the rarity of the equipment will be appropriate to your power rank. But more importantly, you will also have to have your gear crafting profession up to a certain level in order to get various higher tiered items, namely crystal gear, to drop out of these boxes. So for example, We've talked about this while it was on the test server that you needed to have 45 KPR in order to get Crystal 5 as a chance to unbox. Well, now they've changed it. Now on the live server, you also additionally have to have the gear crafting maxed out. Okay, just I just wanna be very clear with that. I'll have other videos that will highlight all of that in detail. Uh, as well, just so that everybody is all on the same page here. So the Gear Crafters Vault can sometimes be obtained when completing any gear crafting recipe at the Gear Crafters Forge, and otherwise can rarely be found in U1 or higher dungeon chests. The chance for this drop and the amount of vaults received both scale with the world's uber rank. Uh, at U9, at least one vault will drop each dungeon, uh, and with U10 and U11 dropping like two or whatever. Um, a couple things to point out is that there it was a bug on the test server that is currently actually on live server. U6 always drops boxes. So devs gotta fix that one, but it's probably gonna take a while before they do. The Gear Crafters Vault usually contains items required by gear crafting recipes and will contain a piece of equipment on all rare lucky results. You mean on the karma bar devs. Anyways, the equipment is always at least two stars and can sometimes have upgraded pearled stats. So that right there is why the end game gear, like Crystal 4 or even Crystal 5, the most valuable Crystal 5 that you can get would be out of these boxes because those two star levels that you have initially on that gear completely demolishes the desire to get crystal five as a drop because it's not going to have any stars on it thus you need to invest two additional levels to max it out versus having it at two star and then furthermore the crafted ones i mean that's just if you really want to waste your resources be my guest but generally speaking this is free so it's just a chance of actually getting uh the crystal gear that you want so 
Anyways, the equipment scales based on power rank of the current class uh, and like gear crafting recipes will not give stats which the current class cannot use. Crystal Five can be rarely awarded uh, if opened by a Trovian with more than 45k PR. They seem to be leaving out the fact that it also needs, uh, you also need to have the gear crafting maxed out, uh, which is why you want to save these boxes until you have the gear crafting maxed out. At least save as many of them as you can. Within reason, you do have to open some of them, but that's why I'm saving a lot of these because I've heard reports from some of you guys the other day uh, that you've been opening upwards of 2,000 of these and have only gotten like a couple crystal fives. So yeah, they definitely nerfed the drop rates from the test server. But the reason why is because there is a gear crafters vault key sold by this merchant right here, uh, which you can see right here. These were extremely expensive on the test server. They have since been extremely nerfed. Uh, they're still not very good in their price, like 4,000 like what <laughs> that's this is like a day or two uh, of cubits just for this on top of like 50,000 other things that drain your cubits and then these keys i mean again beggars can't be choosers they're better than they used to be but the point being is that these are going to trigger karma however uh triggering karma does not necessarily guarantee you a good item most of the karma items are kind of bad and uh, uh furthermore this is a beginner's trap because these keys are laser focused uh, on the cash whales that are already at the end game that just want to get the c5 and basically pay to skip playing this video game i just personally i don't mean to go off on a tangent here but i just never understood paying to skip content Unless it's particularly annoying, which I don't find grinding dungeons to be annoying. So this would be the last thing that I would ever want to spend money on. Anyways, there's also some vault magnet potions, which are sold in the more tab in the store. Uh, these, these are kind of like the dragon coin boosters. So you get a one time boost on your gear crafting journey with 200 gear crafting vaults. So we basically would buy this and we would get double the amount of vaults up to a total of 200, right? Now, this is where earlier I said you need to be making $40 an hour uh, because you can get 200 of these in, well, you can get like 130 minutes. Yeah, 200 in an hour. It's actually faster than that. <laughs> I did the initial calculation based on just doing normal dungeons, but if you want the most effective way of actually grinding these, uh, there's a couple different options. So uh, that's basically as far as, yeah, that's uh, that's all they say about the gear crafters vaults. So I can go on a bit of a tangent here to explain to you guys the most effective places to grind. So that's going to end up being U6 because in U6, most average players are going to be able to absolutely destroy mobs uh at the moment maybe it's a well it is a bug yeah at the moment the devs overlooked the fact that uh u6 is guaranteeing drops of these boxes so that's already checking one box but then on top of it being able to decimate all of the enemies and pick up all of the gear you're gonna want to change your loot filters boys so that you can pick up pretty much everything because as you loot collect gear you're getting those block elements which are going to be the resource that will bottleneck you in this profession okay so with u6 you're basically killing two birds with one stone because you're getting the gear boxes cool but you're also farming gear efficiently now uh if we end up going a little bit further than that i would argue it is still more effective to grind u10 and more namely u11 if you're strong enough to grind it efficiently because on top of all of the other gear that you're getting you do have a rare chance of getting crystal 4 in u10 and crystal 5 in u11 as far as i know it's geo topside i don't know if it's just in uh, every biome in the game but more more than likely no, it is every biome in the game. That's right. Because I've heard some of you guys say that you got some uh, out of Sundered Uplands. So we'll talk about that in a minute. But basically, my point being is that by getting more crystal gear, uh, you essentially are allowing yourself to get more block element because those are going to loot collect for better items. I don't know if I'd recommend upgrading the crystal gear to three star to get the molds, though. But again, that's only if you're like absolutely broke and don't want to end up spending the flux uh, to buy the molds off of this idiot. So furthermore, the most efficient way of grinding these boxes once you no longer need the block element is going to be U10 or U11, but mostly U10 Sundered Uplands 5-star dungeons. 
uh, because those dungeons are kind of static. You can just stay there. You don't have to be wandering around and stuff like that. Uh, you know, and you're constantly completing objectives that are going to end up giving you the gear crafter vaults and you get tons and tons and tons of them. Uh, it's, it's ridiculously fast, but at the moment, most players will not want to use that method because of the block element resource being the primary that you want to go for. So there is a whole bunch of different styles that were added, which these include the 18 new costumes that are added to the game. Uh, check out my other video. I'll try to remember to put a card in the top right, but I have a video that highlights all of the uh, costumes already. And those of you that have been wondering, why is he farming Starfire Fragments? Because the Shadowhunter costume costs three Starfire Fragments and the Lunar Lancer costume also costs three uh, Starfire Fragments. I, I go over all of that, not only in the video that shows all of the 18 costumes, but I also have a YouTube short for each and every individual costume that you can search up on the channel as well. Now let's move on to the additional changes. So I'm gonna kind of skip through these and grab the parts that I think are the most interesting for you guys. So we're gonna start making some mega cuts. First and foremost, please note that the, the equipped geode modules have been unequipped with this update. Uh, so you basically just go to the geode hub and re-equip your vacuum, boys. Crystal weapons can no longer be crafted at the Sunseeker Forge in the Geode Surface Hub, which totally makes sense because there's no reason for it anymore because now it's at the Gear Crafter. Lower tiered equipment will now actually loot collect for slightly more flux. Cool. The Forge can no longer be used to upgrade some tiers of equipment into a higher tier. I don't know if anybody still even did that, honestly. Viridium Nitroglitterin iridium ore and ember slag ore can now sometimes be found in the miners trove boxes who cares killing leviathans now guarantees an overpacked nitro decay suspension vault with increased drop amounts at higher uber ranks which means u11 leviathans I, I don't know they're trying to act like they're worthwhile but you would never want to take the risk of getting a bad permanent torch so you would more than rather just go to u10 uh, anyways, the overpack nitro decay suspension vaults can be refined at the Sunseeker's Crystal Forge at the Geode Hub area. Uh, this recipe will grant 175 nitro, 10 forge fragments, and an amount of nitro uh, decay suspension vaults. So I've heard that the additional random nitro that you can get is like 20 to 60. So it's pretty nice. Costs of these items, like, you know, basically converting them at the Sunseeker Crystal Forge starts at 1k flux and increases by 2000 flux every time it's crafted. This cost will reset at the daily reset. Uh, the recipe can be crafted up to 100 times per day. I don't know why you would ever want to do it up to 100 times per day because it just wouldn't be worthwhile. Let's take a quick little gander at Nitro. Oh boy. That's what I like to see. That's what I was really hoping would happen with this update. I don't know if it's because of these boxes per se. I think it's just because across the board, Nitro has become a lot easier to obtain. And so Nitro has had significant price drops on PC. Now, granted, we are coming right after uh, gathering day, but still, this was at like 140, uh, 145. I think uh, just before the update went live and then when the update went live, everything just ended up going down in price uh, and it seems to be around the 127, 125 mark. So that's that's really, really nice. Faces, hats and weapons can now be found in Radiant 2 Plus and Stellar 2 Plus tiers. I have no idea what that means. I assume that they just mean it can have two stars on it or something. I don't know. Added a flask seller merchant to the hub who sells the flasks and emblems otherwise found in the more tab in the store. So who cares? Some of the merchants from the hub have found their way to the market fixtures in clubs. These merchants will only appear on fixtures placed or upgraded after this update. <laughs> I'm not touching my fixtures, devs. You can't convince me. The following merchants are now present in addition to existing club merchant and workbenches. Uh, market level one has the collector, flask, seller, chaotic, Carl, blah, blah, blah. It's just a bunch of cash shop merchants, so it doesn't matter. Apparently, they updated the map in the hub to be more accurate, which I, I still don't know what that means. Then again, maybe my uh, small minimap mod is messing with this, and maybe this is like... Actually, maybe they have like a cool painting or something that shows this area and the mess that it is. They need to over like, why did they overhaul the hub if they were just going to end up adding all of these things like this, especially just doesn't make sense. Move this crap out of the way. 
Put that over there. They also made the slash metrics command is now sorted alphabetically. They also made it so it's Lobstroso and Spike Walker trophies now grant Mighty Soul Tangles when composted, which is good because Spike Walker wasn't working prior to this update. And yeah, I think that pretty much covers it. They did fix an issue that could cause Iguana enemies from freezing during their idle animations. I think they need to fix the Pirate Captain from freezing and the Knight from freezing uh, and the Revenant from freezing and the Dino Tamer getting stuck in its alt casting animation. Uh, there's there's a lot of things that still freeze that are much more important than some random enemy. But anyways, with all of that said, we got another update and with it, we've got another crafting table. <laughs> I was just thinking like, dude, wait, like, look at all this. It's just too, too many crafting tables, man. Like we got no more room to put these anywhere. And I, that's a huge pet peeve of mine. I hate 50,000 crafting tables, man. That's stupid. That shows no foresight. So anyways, what do I think of the update overall? I think that it's good. I think that it's more so going to affect the lower tiered to mid, maybe high tiered players. Uh, for those of us at the end game, it's more power for the sake of having more power because there's still nothing in the game that really challenges us right now. You know, we've already got the skill tree. We've got crystal rings. We got crystal gems. The thing that I'm genuinely worried about and concerned with this update uh, and that I think is having so many people so frustrated is because it has been implied to us that this was the big update that the devs were working on. So basically the way that the story goes uh, is the devs ended up promising, uh, promising and hinting that they were working on something big. Uh, they started rumoring that sometime around last year. And then as this update got closer to release, they started saying, you know, they started backing out on their word and saying like, I don't know if we ever said we were doing a big update or anything like that, which tells me this was the big update that they were planning which is worrying because it's another update that has successfully done the same thing that every other update has done, which is take an aspect of the game that was not monetized and make it cash shop driven because gear technically is now pay to win. Long story short, it seems like most of the updates coming to Trove are going to end up just taking different functions of the game that already existed and kind of upgrading them and streamlining them to not only be more monetized and cash shop heavy, but on top of that, again, I don't want to derive from the fact that this update makes gear and makes the end game that much more approachable for the average player. The Curio Merchant's in the hub with a new costume, by the way. Uh, anyways, overall, what do I give the update? I'd give it like a, uh, a, a 10 dog farts out of 1900. Uh, it's a cool update. I like its execution. There's a lot of things about that I question. Overall, it is involving us grinding dungeons and I love grinding dungeons anyways. So this is just adding more things for me to get while doing dungeons. I don't like the fact that it has a huge negative impact on inventory because your inventory is just clogged full of gear all the time now, like twice as much gear, uh, three times as much gear usually because of these stupid little things. But at the very least, these do stack in your inventory, but it's gonna be very annoying unboxing a bunch of them. It's like unboxing gems, but not nearly as annoying. Um, overall though, the update's pointless. Because again, there's there's no reason for it. We don't need Crystal 5 gear. We never did and we never wanted it. With all that said, with all my thoughts out of the way, what do you guys think about it? Okay, maybe I'm being a bit too harsh on it. Maybe I'm being a bit too lenient on it. What do you think? I know that most of you are probably gonna be like, ah, it's kind of boring uh, because it's basically just the same thing that we've always been doing. Just now we get to have higher number values, at least those of us at the end game. But I want to hear your thoughts if you're in the middle ground, you know, if if this is something that makes you happy because now suddenly uh, the end game is that much more approachable, at least in terms of gear, even if not the other aspects. Uh, but aside from that, I would very much appreciate if you would smash like sub for more if you haven't already. I mean, I'm the trove guy at this point. You know, I've been doing this for years and we'll have plenty of videos covering pretty much everything related to this update uh, until we end up having another drought <laughs> anyways sign or and stay epic everybody